Hello Year 6, Miss Kamal here. Welcome to today's lesson, Lesson 5 of Science. In our unit of Evolution and Inheritance, we're going to look at the inquiry question, how are animals adapted to survive today? So here's our knowing more and remembering more. In a moment, I want you to pause the video and jot down the answers. Later, at the end of the lesson, I want you to pop over to Purple Mash and complete the quiz, the Knowing More, Remembering More Science Week 5 quiz, which I've set for you as a to-do. Make sure you hand it in to me so I can see how well you've done. So in order to answer the inquiry question, how are animals adapted to survive today? We must describe what plants and animals need for their species to survive, explain how animals can adapt to their surroundings, and then we'll look at how plants do the same. So over here are some keywords, and these keywords link to our learning today. I want you to make sure that you pause the video and take a note of them. So by the end of the unit, you'll have a glossary of words that link directly to our unit of evolution and inheritance. Have you ever seen this in your home before? A plant that's wilted, the leaves going from green to yellow, and the ends looking really crispy, sometimes breaking off. This house plant has died or is in the process of dying. Why do you think this is? Pause the video and jot down some ideas. Think about what plants need to survive. Well done. So in order to survive, plants need space to grow. Plants need oxygen. They need the right amount of light and the right amount of water. If you got that down, on your paper, well done. But what about animals then? Can you write down a list to tell me what animals need in order to survive? Pause the video and have a go. Well done. So in order for animals to survive, they need food, they need water, they need to avoid being eaten, and they need to find a mate in order to reproduce and make more of itself. Well done. You've described what plants and animals need for their species to survive. Next, we're going to explain how animals can be adapted to their habitat. What do you already know about how animals are adapted to their environments? Pause the video and have a think. That's right. In year five, you learnt about climate zones and how animals adapt to suit their habitat. A habitat is the environment where an organism lives. The animals and plants in one habitat, for example, are suited to live there, and they might not be able to survive in other habitats. Would the tawny owl survive in the snow white Arctic? Why or why not? Pause the video now and jot down your ideas. Well done. The tawny owl is camouflaged in the wood. It can hunt easily. It wouldn't be able to camouflage successfully amongst the snow and therefore it would be eaten or not able to catch its prey. There's also the element of the weather to consider too. Do you think the tawny owl's feathers are equipped to deal with such harsh low temperatures of the Arctic? What do you think the temperature is like in the woods where it lives now? What do you think would happen if the habitat of a tawny owl changed to become a city? Pause for thought and jot down your ideas. Well done. That's right, the owl would find it more difficult to hunt, wouldn't it? Owls are nocturnal animals, so the lights would be confusing for it and there wouldn't be much prey about for it to hunt, so it might starve. What do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of living in the ocean, the savanna or grasslands, the jungle, the Arctic or Antarctic, and the desert? 
pause for thought and jot down your ideas. How can an animal's adaptations help them to survive in these diverse habitats? Pause for thought and jot down some ideas. Well done. Animals adapt in many ways. Fur would need to be thick enough for a cold climate, for example, and short enough for a really hot climate. More fat would be needed in a cold habitat to keep them warm. And it would also be needed in a hot climate as a source of nutrition and energy for the animal, as there's not much vegetation or prey in the desert, for example. Long claws. Long claws would serve well in a forest to grip onto vegetation or tree bark, but I don't think it would be so good in the water. Instead, I think maybe we would need fins and a streamlined body. That would suit the sea to swim efficiently, to hunt or to get away from predators when being hunted. Big ears would serve well when listening out for hidden prey, perhaps across the grasslands of the savanna or in the forest. And long noses, such as an anteater's nose, can house a very long tongue, which can harvest ants from ant hills or termites from inside rotting bark. Let's find out more. Woo! Than a jeep and another on my chest so I can rest On the sizzle and sands that ride like a pan I'm crossing the Sahara in my caravan I'm the legendary dromedary 400 pounds on my back in the desert I carry Nothing to drink until the next oasis Water is precious so we never waste it Drop of rain, it's ever extra dry, but I never get a grain of sand in my eye. If the wind blows, gyro, sand, tornadoes, I got better lids, kid, than J Lo. Long and thick with a double lash, close and fast, built to last. And the hump on my back got an extra tank, like a savers bank, packed with fat. The hump on my back is packed with fat. The hump on my back is packed with fat. The hump on my back is packed with fat. Won't say it again, cause you know all that. Thick lips. Uh. Eat sticks and bone, thorny scrubs that others leave alone. Sometimes sip for the salty brine, cause the H2O is hard to find. My shaggy fur insulates, my body temps regulate, so I don't sweat and dehydrate. Live another day to procreate. So how has this camel adapted to living in a desert climate? Its short but really thick fur prevents sunburn. Its wide feet help it stay on top of the sand so it doesn't sink. And also the camel has really long eyelashes which protect them against sand blowing in the air. They have long legs and this keeps their body further from the hot sand and have thick leathery lips which protect them when eating prickly plants such as cactus plants. 
So let's look at this emperor penguin. How has this emperor penguin adapted to living in the freezing Antarctica? Well, let's look at its feathers. Its feathers are actually waterproof. Getting out of the sea, which is really ice cold, you'd feel really, really cold, wouldn't you? Think about when you come out of the shower or the bath. You feel really cold. So to stop them feeling cold, their feathers are waterproof. They have sharp beaks, and this is to feed their offspring and to catch fish. They have flippers to help balance when they walk, and they are really, really good swimmers. They have lots of fat and blubber, and this is to keep them warm in extreme winter. And look at their feet. Their feet are really wide, and this enables them to balance and grip the ice. Also, if their feet are really wide, it spreads out their weight so they don't sink into the snow. So if a camel was going to live in Antarctica, how might it have to adapt to suit its new habitat? Pause the video and have a think and jot down your ideas. Well done. So yeah, the fur on the camel's body would have to become waterproof. So the water, the ice cold water, wouldn't touch its skin and make it feel really cold. It would have a thicker layer of fur, maybe longer. It would have blubber all over its body to keep it warm in extreme winter. And I think it would keep its wide feet to enable it to balance. And maybe it would have some claws so it could grip the ice, just like the penguin does. So how has an eagle adapted to their environment? Pause the video and jot down your ideas. Well done. This eagle has wings with feathers so it could soar through the air. It has a sharp beak and talons and these rip through flesh as it's a meat eater. It has a wide spread out fan like tail and this aids the eagle with its balance and agility in the air. Sometimes eagles just hover in the air and glide, looking down on the land for prey. Their eyesight is impeccable. How do you think polar bears adapted to the Arctic? What is the environment like? What characteristics does a polar bear have? Pause the video and make a note of your ideas. Well done. Polar bears have small ears to reduce frostbite. Look at their fur. It camouflages them in the snow. Did you know that each piece of hair is actually transparent? They have wide padded feet for stability on the ice so they don't sink in the snow as well. They have sharp teeth and claws for tearing flesh because they're meat eaters. They have a thick layer of fat and blubber to keep them warm in the dropping temperatures. They have thick fur to keep them insulated. Looking at these animals, I can see that they all look really different. And they all live in different habitats. Looking at this elephant, I can see that it has a really long nose. We call this a trunk. Elephants use their trunk to dig deep in the ground to fish out this really important salt. It benefits them as they eat this salt, as it replaces what we call electrolytes. We lose electrolytes when we're dehydrated, because we know that this elephant perhaps lives in the Serengeti in a very, very hot, hot place, where water is quite scarce. Here we have a shark. It's got a slimline body and it helps it swim really well in the water. Sharks need to keep on swimming so water keeps passing through their gills so they can breathe. They also need to swim really fast so they can catch their prey. And over here we have a camel. We've spoken about the camel's fur being really thick to stop it getting burnt from the sun. We've spoken about its beautiful long eyelashes to stop it having sand in its eyes and rubbery lips so it could eat the cactus. I wonder though, what if each of these animals didn't have these particular 
characteristics. What would happen to them? What if this cheetah didn't have its spots? What if this seal didn't have all that blubber? And what about these ears? What would happen if this animal didn't have his ears so big? Can you record this in your book? I want you to write down the name of an animal. Choose one that we've discussed today. Then I want you to list four of its adaptations. Underneath those adaptations, just like you see here, I would like you to write down what would happen if this part was missing. What would it not be able to do? So for an example, I have chosen a polar bear. And I've said thick fur is one of its adaptations. And this thick fur is to deal with the low temperatures of its habitat. What if this thick fur was missing? Well, it wouldn't be able to survive harsh winters. Pause the video and have a go. Well done, you've explained how animals can be adapted to their habitat. Now we're gonna do the same for plants. In year five, you learnt about climate zones. And this will prepare you about how plants have adapted to their environments. Here we have different plants. We have Passiflora, we have the boab tree, we have a cactus, quiver tree, bird of paradise flower, this giant redwood. How do you think they've all adapted over the years to suit their habitat? Pause for thought and jot down some ideas. So how are these trees adapted to their environments? When we consider this question, we must also consider the environment where the organism lives. So these plants live in very different habitats and environments. This quiver tree, for example, lives in a really hot environment. And this giant redwood tree lives in a really cold environment. And that is why they look so different. How has the quiver tree adapted to a hot climate. Pause the video and jot down some ideas as you look at the image. Well done. Light coloured bark is evident on this tree and this is to reflect sunlight so it doesn't get too hot. There's self amputation of branches and this is to conserve water. This tree has very deep roots, it goes really deep into the earth to get water. It has really thin needle leaves and this is to reduce water loss. The tough bark and the tough leaves protect it from predators. How has the giant redwood tree adapted to a cold climate? It has dark coloured bark to absorb sunlight, has evergreen needles that are present all year round. It has deep roots and that's to keep it steady in the ground so it doesn't fall, it's so tall. Its leaves are thin needles and this is to reduce water loss. And as it's a really tall tree, it rises right above the canopy and this is so it can receive more sunlight this is so it has energy via photosynthesis. This Passiflora has adapted to a crowded jungle climate. It lets off a pungent smell to attract bees, hummingbirds and other pollinators. And it has tendrils. There's a tendril there, you see? And these tendrils grow up other plants to receive sunlight. Again, for photosynthesis, so the plant has energy. It has brightly coloured, brightly coloured to attract bees for pollination and it also bears some fruit which is then eaten by animals and that's how its seeds spread. So these plants have adapted their, to their environment in different ways and when we consider this we have to think about the plant's roots, the plant's bark, 
its flowers and its spines and its tendrils, all of these are adaptations to suit its habitat. So I want you to do the same now as you did for the animals. I want you to choose a plant that we've discussed. I want you to list each of the adaptations. And then I want you to write down at the bottom there, what wouldn't it be able to do if these adaptations were missing? Pause the video and have a go. Well done, you've now explained how plants can be adapted to their habitat. So let's review the knowledge. Pause the video and see if you can answer true or false to the following four questions. So let's see how many you got right. Number one, animals are more or less able to survive in particular environments. This is true. A camel is more likely to survive in the desert than it is in the Arctic. Plants need nutrients, space to grow, oxygen, light and water to survive. Absolutely, and they need all of them. If I were to give a plant nutrients, space to grow, oxygen and light, but no water, it would not survive. Number three, adaptation can lead to evolution. Yes, that's true, it can. An adaptation occurs during an animal's or plant's lifetime. No, this is false. Adaptation takes many years to take place and it's a change that happens very, very slowly. Right, that's all for today. I'd like you now to go over to Purple Mash and complete your knowing more and remembering more. And if you haven't accessed the resources already, they're in your pack or they're on Purple Mash. Complete them, make sure you hand them in so we can see how well you've done.